Number five, the music of Terminator 2. The score for so Terminator good. 2 sees the return of Brad Fiedel, who previously scored the first movie. Whereas the first movie sounded more synthesized, his score in Terminator 2 sounds more powerful and epic. He gets the action beats down perfectly, as well as the use of haunting music which reflects the end of the world. His theme for the T-1000 sounds terrifying Ominous. and almost like a synthetic yeah. metallic living organism itself. Mm -hmm. His main theme for Terminator 2 was so well received, it spent six weeks in the Billboard charts, reaching at number 70. I didn't know that. That's interesting. I did mention in the watch party that, that I had a few weeks ago, which I'm still editing because it's a technical nightmare. The next one will go much better. But um, how that the, the music that he did for the T-1000, especially during the chase scenes, and he made that real sharp meow, meow sound. Um, you guys know what I'm talking about. How that sound is kind of, it's kind of like the T- like the sharp, stabby, slashy sort of noise. I mean, the music in here is so well done. Many have tried to replicate the sheer power and magic of Fiedel's music in Terminator 2, but just can't quite pull it off like he did. The movie also uses two famous songs, one of those being Bad to the Bone. At that mm -hmm. stage, using Bad to the Bone in movies had become something of a cliche, as it was previously used in Christine and Problem Child. But despite this, it still feels fresh and original in T2, and it's perfect. as it's often played as a sort of theme for Arnie's T-800 character, right. which actually goes really well with the character. The song best known for Terminator 2 is without a doubt the Guns N' Roses hit, You Could Be Mine. Before the Guns N' Roses song was picked, other songs were considered for the film, including I Wanna Be Sedated by the Ramones and Higher Ground by the Red Hot Chili Peppers. But it was supposedly Arnie who picked You Could Be Mine by Guns N' Roses. There was even a music video of You Could Be Mine, which featured the band playing at a concert, where the T-800 also attends to scope the place oh, out. I didn't know I always that. loved the scene where Arnie comes face to face with the band. As a kid, I was watching it and I was like thinking, so is he gonna oh, kill Guns N' so Roses? Funny. But Thankfully, he didn't. As with Bad to the Bone, I didn't you know that. Mind just goes perfectly with T2. Number four, the Lost sequel. After the release of Terminator 2, fans were so blown away by the movie, they really wanted a sequel, despite the fact that T2 ends pretty conclusively. And it ends. Terminator enthusiasts ends would have to wait really 12 well. years to get Terminator 3. But what most fans forget is that there actually already was a direct sequel to Terminator 2 in the form of T2 3D oh, yeah. Battle Across Time, right. which came out as an attraction shown at Universal Studios in 1996. The 12 minute feature was co-directed by James Cameron and saw the return of Arnold Schwarzenegger, Linda Hamilton, Robert Patrick and Edward Furlong. But it's only like 15 minutes logs, long. And it was made on a budget of $24 million. The feature looked cinematic and like it could have been plucked out of one of the actual Terminator movies. What I find interesting is that Edward Furlon had clearly aged since T2, with him now looking older, so it kind of gives an insight into what it could have been like had the sequel's productions rehired the actor for the part in later sequels. Yeah. Sadly though, if you want to experience this adventure yourself, the attraction has since been removed from both the Florida and Hollywood Universal Studios. But it is still currently operating at the Japan Universal theme park. You see... Here's the thing. I need Since to go the hunt that thing T2, down. Many movies have come out which have now claimed to be the true sequel to Terminator 2. Where, in actual fact, T2 3D Battle Across Time is actually more like the actual direct sequel than those other attempts. I when you think about that. it. Number three, action figures. Yep, you know it's the 90s when toys for kids are released that are based on violent R-rated movies. Right. Mm -hmm. The Terminator action figures were released by Kenner, whom brought oh out God. most toys based on movies or TV shows back in the day, including Star Wars and the real Ghostbusters. And man, I loved these toys as a kid. I honestly really thought that they were awesome. Mm. Personally, I remember having the T-800 figure where you pull his arm down and his face and torso pops out oh. to reveal his Terminator exoskeleton. I loved this figure. And wow. I would walk around with it saying, I am the Terminator. No. <laughs> yeah, some of the toys didn't really make sense. Like, why is the T-800 wearing a pink top? Why does the T-1000 look nothing like Robert Patrick? Oh, and yeah, since he doesn't. when did the Terminator have a Terminator mobile? One that comes complete with a gas mask. I don't remember that from the movie. Mm. Why would the Terminator even need a gas mask? Right. Well, it doesn't matter. 
You can't really look into it too deeply. They were still plastic awesomeness. I actually still have some of my T2 toys, oh my as we've goodness. got John Connor here. Yeah, oh. I never took him out of his packaging. I mean, I don't even know why I got him. I never wanted to be John Connor. I wanted to be Arnie. So, okay. And of course, we've also got this big beast. This thing is meant to wonder how much those things are worth. Walk and make noises, but yeah, I don't really want to tamper with it too much because it's now like an antique, so mm. it's just kind of staying in his box. However, you can take his. My gosh, you guys! It's been thirty years since Terminator Two. This year is the thirtieth year. That sucks. Jeez. He's off, and yeah. It looks really, really creepy. <laughs> Ew. Number two, extended version. So during the 90s, a televised version of Terminator 2 was broadcast, which featured scenes that weren't in the theatrical cut. Seeing these scenes for the first time was actually exciting. However, when Terminator 2 Judgment Day was released on DVD here in Australia, it only featured the extended edition in a special DVD release that did not feature the original cut. And after a while, I felt like the extended cut wasn't needed, as the theatrical cut was perfect the way that it was. Oh no, I disagree. I disagree with that. Okay, so there are some things in the extended version that probably aren't necessary. The scene where the T-1000 goes and kills the dog. Uh, the scene where he goes into John Connor's room and he's touching stuff different little moments like that and especially there's a scene at the end where it shows Sarah Connor as an older woman sitting on a park bench looking at her son John Connor who's now he's a congressman or something like that and he's playing with his kid what was I saying when you walked in you made me lose my train of thought I don't even remember what I was saying now oh I know what I was saying about that scene at the end, that was a terrible scene. But this is what Cameron, I think, should have done. The scene where they they had, uh, I almost called her Sarah Connor, Linda Hamilton's twin sister playing the part, the reflection in the mirror, when they took the chip out of his, out of his head and they flipped the switch, or, or that was what they were going to do. And John and Sarah have this little argument with each other. And he doesn't want to destroy the chip and she does. And he makes this very strong point to her about, you know, if I'm supposed to be this great military leader, maybe you should listen to me once in a while. You know, like if I'm supposed to have all this power and this, you know, being able to rally all these people and yet you're not listening to me. That, that, that was kind of the gist of it. And that scene was important for those two reasons. One, that she finally started to actually put him in this position where he was kind of calling the shots and he was, you know, living up to this role that he was supposed to be fulfilling. And two, because they flipped the switch in the Terminator's chip so that he could then start to learn and process things more like a human brain would, which was what led him in the end to make the decision to just blatantly disobey John Connor's orders and let himself be terminated. So that scene, I think the theatrical cut, including that scene, would be like the, the like I love the theatrical cut anyway. I, I still think Terminator 2 is the best movie of all time, theatrical cut or no theatrical cut. But I believe the epitome of perfection of the storytelling involves including that scene, which is why the only way I like to watch Terminator 2 nowadays, unless it's just on TV or something, but the only way I like to watch Terminator 2 nowadays is to watch the extended or slash special edition, ultimate edition, which they've got all these different names for it. Some of it includes more footage than others, but I like the one that uh, does not include that terrible scene at the end in the park with the awful old makeup on Linda Hamilton. The extended edition in a special DVD release that did not feature the original cut. 
and after a while I felt like the extended cut wasn't ne- Also, the extended cut included that scene with Kyle Reese, the dream sequence that she had. I remember seeing a picture in a magazine showing her together with Michael Bean filming the scene, and then he never showed up in the movie, and I was disappointed. And then in the trailer, they showed the scene that came from this part right here that got cut out where she said something to John about, you don't know what it's like to try to kill one of these things. And I remember noticing that that never showed up too. And I was, I was disappointed in both cases. I could see why they cut the Kyle Reese part because it's not quite as vital as the other part. Release that did not feature the original cut. And after a while, I felt like the extended cut wasn't needed as the theatrical cut was perfect the way that it was. I'll admit it was interesting seeing Michael Bean return as Kyle Reese in a dream sequence, but once I had seen it and thought about it, I also felt like the character didn't really belong in T2. I also thought that a lot of the extra stuff was just padding that wasn't needed. Like, did we really need a scene of the Terminator trying to smile? Was it really required? That's what my brother looks like when he get, does this. He does this goofy smile like that. He looks so much like Arnold when he does To make that. Terminator 2 better, <laughs> along with other scenes of the T-1000 yeah, snooping like, around. I agree that I don't know, wasn't maybe necessary. it's just me, but I felt like it slowed the movie down. There's even a scene of the T-1000 killing the dog. That one. Oh, come on, man. You don't kill the dog. <laughs> I'm not against the extended like cut, Myers. but I'm more of a fan of just watching it one time just out of curiosity to see unused footage of T-2. But that's it. I never envisioned it as a replacement. The only extended scene that I personally think works is the scene where we see Miles Dyson at home, where we see he's a loving husband and father, which also explores him working that on the That is an important scene too, but... he honestly believes that he is working on an amazing I don't amazing think that one's the most making important Making his prophecy of things to extra come scene. even more tragic. Thankfully, as time but has gone a, on, the original cut of T2 has finally become more mainstream again. For the longest time, the only version made available to purchase was the extended cut. The only way you could watch the original in all its glory was in good old-fashioned VHS. Mm. Hey, get back in there. <laughs> However, one scene which didn't make oh. it into the extended cut was an alternative ending, which is set in the... Well, it has... It is in some of the extended versions. They've given it all these different names, like I said. Yeah, this is the scene I'm talking about. It's terrible. Future where an elderly Sarah Connor is talking into her voice recorder at a park, where John, who is now middle-aged, is playing with his own child. This was to certify that the future is safe and the war with Skynet never happened. So I don't cringy. Know, the look of this scene just feels a bit off compared to the rest of the film. This future world in Terminator 2 looks more like something from Back to the Future's mm. 2015 and Back to the Future 2. But regardless, it was decided to end the movie in a more ambiguous way by it not being made definitively clear if the future is saved. And look, if anyone does like this ending, that's fine. But to me personally, I find it a little bit fairy tale-ish. Mm, and to yeah, me, Terminator Margaret. isn't a fairy tale. It's a tragedy. But I guess it's all about tastes and perspectives. That said, though, had the movie ended with this scene, then there wouldn't have been any more not up to scratch sequels. Number one, the most expensive movie of its time. Yes, that's true. Terminator oh, 2 Oh, for a second, I thought my phone... <laughs> I thought my phone was... Was going off the notification because that is that's the the uh, notification tune. My phone. Number one, the most expensive movie of its time. <laughs> Terminator Two: Judgment Day was the most expensive movie ever made for its time, with a budget of about one hundred and two million dollars, which was just a whopper for that era. So there was a lot counting on T2 being a hit, which thankfully it was, as it would go on to make over $509 million at the box office, becoming the highest grossing movie of 1991. And everyone mm -hmm. loved this movie, fans and critics alike. Thanks to the special effects, stunt works, script, and acting performances, it has gone on to frequently be regarded as one of the greatest movies ever made, and is still just as popular now as it was 30 years ago. It would also go on to win five Academy Awards in 1992. And many attempts have been made to replicate the magic of T2. But yeah. it seems that no one can quite recapture the lightning in a bottle that James Cameron had created no. back in 1991. It's a testament to movie making and storytelling, exploring many philosophies, as well as how impressive action set pieces can be. It may have been an expensive movie to make, but you can clearly see every cent of the budget being put on screen for good use. Mm. Terminator 2 is a testament to the art of cinema, and it proves that sometimes taking a gamble pays off when it comes to the fate of filmmaking.
As the movie itself states, there is no fate but what we make for ourselves. And oh boy, did they make a good one with Terminator 2. Oh yes. They absolutely did. Aww. At this stage, I think it's safe to assume that nearly everyone on the planet knows about Terminator 2. <laughs> it's been a wonderful and glorious 30 years of having this movie to go back to, as it never stops blowing audiences away with how spectacular it is. And let's be honest, it will continue to do so. Anyway, I'm Minty, and I'll be back for another episode, of course. See ya! <laughs> Well, that was that was really interesting. I I knew most of that. I take exception to some of the stuff that that was that was mentioned, and some of the stuff I didn't know. But this is very well done. I I love. I, I'm just just love little trivia things like this. As I've mentioned many times before, something I was going to say that was occurring to me. He was talking about James Cameron, and um, so Arnold has written some about his experiences with James Cameron, and. You know, it's weird. It's it's a weird thing. Like, I have this weird feeling about Cameron. Like, as a person, I don't really care too much for him because he seems like a complete... Whatever, okay? I just... He just doesn't seem like a very nice person. At the same time, and some of his latest movies, I absolutely hate. I hate Titanic. I hate Avatar. I just, just can't with those. But at the same time... He's a genius in a lot of ways when it comes to filmmaking, especially in the 80s and the early 90s. Excellent stories that he brought to us on the big screen. And he's got this very clear vision for how things are supposed to be. But Arnold was talking also one time about uh, how he, in the, I think it was the first, the first Terminator movie, he was saying how he thought it would be funny to have the Terminator open up this refrigerator and drink some beer and get a little drunk and and James Cameron was just so exasperated by how ridiculous that was that Arnold would say that you know it's like he's a robot and he he was kind of harsh in his reaction to him and and he was also quite I mean I th none of this is a surprise okay it, it's not because I've known this about James Cameron for a while but I got to thinking especially after Arnold was talking in his autobiography about the influence of his father. And if it weren't for his father's, you know, basically abusive nature in different ways, that it wouldn't, you know, maybe Arnold wouldn't have been shaped into the person that he was. He wouldn't have accomplished the things that he did. And maybe if it weren't for James Cameron, James Cameron being so assholy in a lot of ways, we wouldn't have been left with some of the magnificent things that we've been left with. So it's, it's interesting to me, this, this kind of like we've got this little trade-off here, you know, this, this, this balance that, that happens, you know, well, if it weren't for this, then this wouldn't happen. And it's just kind of ties into the whole thing about just life in general and how nuanced and not black and white white most things in life are that there there are a lot of shades of gray and it's just kind of interesting thinking about how you kind of resolve those conflicts in your brain so like I have weird mixed emotions about Cameron I'm pissed at Cameron that he lied to us about Edward Furlong being in dark fate that was a flat out lie. No, the digital copy of Edward Furlong does not count as Edward Furlong being in Dark Fate. And also to later find out that it was his idea to kill off John Connor. I feel like James Cameron, True Lies was his last great movie. And then it was just like, he just went on this weird downward trajectory with the quality of his films. Now, I know Titanic is super popular. I know Avatar was super popular. But in my opinion, both of those films are hugely overrated and just ridiculous. Just, they're, they're fun to watch maybe once. I, 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 I'll, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't even say Titanic is really fun to watch. Maybe the part where the ship hits the iceberg. From then on, it gets more entertaining but anytime Rose and Jack are involved it just like goes to me I hated that storyline and Avatar also just it's just well I've made no secret 
as far as I've made no secret as to how I feel about those films, but it's, it's like James Cameron, what has happened to you? And he's doing like what? Three or four avatar sequels. <sighs> okay. Well, this video is probably 30 or 40 minutes long. I swear as much as I've talked and I honestly did not have that much time to spare. Uh, so I need to wrap things up and we'll, See you guys in the next video. Hasta luego. No, hasta la vista.